folks, Tonester here. I've got a replay for you today, and this is more along the lines of um, learning to flank, basically. And this game is a loss, unfortunately. But one of the things that we're doing, we're on Erlenberg, and it's an assault game. So you got 10 minutes to win, right? So normally I would not go to this position in F4, but... I want to catch people crossing because I do have an auto reloader and I might be able to punish them. So that's one thing. The other thing is there's no arty. If there was arty, that would make this play not a very good play, right? But I know people are going to cross and often they cross, um, they cross short and you can get some shots on them. So let's go ahead and start the replay and we'll talk about my positioning throughout the game here. Because we do end up with a pretty good score, even though we end up losing the game. We do everything in our power to win it. There's just some games that are unwinnable, right? And sure enough, there's a T-44 that crosses the open. We're able to put in three nice shots into it and back off. So that's 700 free damage that we just got, right? So now we're in kind of a poor position if they poke us and try and attack us from that ridge, which is exactly what happens. That T-44 in the back makes a nice play and he attacks us in the back. And I'm waiting for my third shell reload. I was only ever going to get one shell on him. So quite honestly, I should have just fired there because I could have just sat there and waited. Uh, I'm in a pretty safe position at this point because we've got a lot of heavies in the middle as this EBR absorbs a shot with his tracks and then my second shot is a fairly poor shot. It happens. So, but as, as we're playing and our EBR is pushing in and we, we go ahead and take two shots there just because we've got shots of opportunity on someone crossing an open field and driving slow but one thing that I've noticed watch our EBR as he crosses over he does not take a lot of damage and part of that might be a speed but it also tells me that they don't have a lot back in this this little bush line back here and so I decide I'm gonna move up and try and punish these T44s because normally the, if if we just allow them to sit there then they're gonna hold this side of the map right but in reality we um, have come, come up here to take some shots on them and we get a lucky bounce there and we're just gonna hold our last shot just because I don't want him to push me right there's two of them there and I don't want him to push me there is a panther and I'm keeping track of him I'm not pulling out far enough for him to actually hurt me as we get hit and I see our Progetto push in. So this is the time where I've got to come help. And he's able to take out the remainder of the higher health uh, T-44. And I take out the low health T-44. So the game is not going very well. We've got two EBRs on the east flank. And enemy EBRs and one gets taken out but there's still one alive and it looks like they have a huge amount of guys in town in fact we've got two very passive heavies and an IS-3 and an ISU the IS-3 and ISU are in trouble right because they are up against four or five tanks there so I know eventually they're going to lose that fight and our our two other heavies decide to move up but they move up kind of oddly they move through this four line and you're never gonna win that coming through that four line there's a reason people don't do it so it's now five to seven but the enemy has a nice crossfire they're they're gonna have a nice crossfire on on uh, all of those heavies because they've got so many people in town that low and that 703 are just not in a good position so the Samua comes out and I'm watching the map as I'm trying to light people and as you guys know from bush mechanics I'm just pulling up into the bush 
trying to get spots, backing off, and getting shots, right? And at this point, I'm, I'm certain these two heavies are going to die. And we've got a Scorpion G that is way too far up. He's, he's too close to the heavies. He's got no armor, so he's going to get a shot, and they're going to rush him, right? So the last thing I want to do is push in right now because they are so clumped up. And we've got nothing on the other side. So what's my best move here? Right? What do I need to do in order to create an opportunity to get more damage? We've got 2200 damage, which isn't a terrible game right now. But it's 5 to 10. It's almost guaranteed to be a loss. And we're attempting to get some shots on these folks. And that was kind of a sad shot that, that didn't pan would have been nice to take out that AMX. But nevertheless, we've we've done about as much damage as we can here. And we've already got two guys in this location, right? So when people talk about flanking, we're not talking about you need to go all the way around the other side of the map and get on the other side. Sometimes that works. But I'm just trying to get a perpendicular crossfire so that as these guys push out towards uh, our two mediums here, we can get side shots. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to garden a little bit here. We're going to try and build us a little nest so that we're not visible as I'm moving around and driving poorly. Now, <laughs> one thing I want you to notice, there's an EBR back here. And he's on his side. But I failed to notice that as I'm playing the game, at which, you know, I'm not perfect. So it's good for me to see sometimes the mistakes that I make. So we do, sp someone spots the tiger and we're able to put three nice shots into him. This, this tank is so great for getting damage because you can unload one, two, or three rounds and, um, and reload. And so, even though it hurt my DPM, I didn't have anything else good to shoot at at that time. So, I go ahead and take all three shots, right? And finally, I think I recognize this EBR's back here. Now, if that EBR had been not on his side, he probably would have spotted me. So, we're going to go ahead and put some shots into him and take him out, right? We have nothing better to shoot at, and we're just going to take him out. And then we're going to push and try, and try and get some more spots on these guys. So we're up to 3,900 damage, which is actually quite respectable. We bounce one shot, and we fire two that we have in the mag. And we're just going to wait. Because we do have the two guys in the corner. They're able to shoot on, onto that S1. Although it doesn't look like they're doing a huge amount of damage there. So that's 4,400 damage. And we finally get spotted. Now, what I probably should have done is driven down. At this point, I shouldn't have gave up on the game. I should have driven down and around the side and waited for these guys to push me and reload it in the meantime. That's probably what I should have done. But that's not what we do. We do go part way and we get into cover here. But if we had gone around the corner, we probably could have gotten some more damage, right? Because we could have gotten back into cover and uh, we're just waiting now. And we go ahead and hit one, two, three shots, and then we raise our gun and call it good for 5,400 damage. But that is the kind of thing, and we do eventually lose because we've got one guy, right? That is the kind of thing that you need to be thinking about as you're watching the mini-map. People used to tell me, watch the mini-map and see what happens. Well, that's what they're talking about. If you got a whole bunch of guys here and you've got a couple of guys here, don't just sit with those same guys. Cr try and create a perpendicular crossfire and get yourself into cover where you're not going to get spotted easily. So I hope that helps somebody. Let's go ahead and look at the after action report on this one 
And if you guys have feedback, please put it in the comments. I will try and respond to it. I've got some other replays that I'll put up for you guys as well that might help with the reading the map thing. It's something that takes time to learn. I mean, I've got 50,000 games, so um, at this point I better know how. But it, uh, it does take time to learn, but you can learn it in lower tiers where people aren't as careful and as safe. And just getting into that position where you can be the last one alive allows you to get a lot more damage in games. And in reality, you know, you can't win them all, so you may as well get as much damage as you can in those games. We, uh, we ended up with a first class and a high caliber on this game. We had uh, 828 XP um, for the high caliber because we had courageous resistance. Um, and we ended up 32 shots, 27 hits, 24 pens. Now that's that's uh, three-fourths of our shots penned. And that's because we were getting side shots on stuff, right? We uh, hit 10 and killed three vehicles. And we only had 129 assists, which is a little surprising. But that netted us um, 53,000 credits, even firing some gold rounds because we ran out of standard rounds. So, um, and 1,400 experience as well. So that's always good for your Italian crew and uh, ended up being a pretty good game. Unfortunately, it was not an ace tanker. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Please do comment if you'd like to see more videos like this. We'd like to help our uh, viewers to get better at tanks if they want to. And we will catch you next time. Tonester out.